everyone, and, and wow, isn't this great? All these Woomba women about to head off on a great entrepreneurial journey. Fantastic to see. Welcome uh, to USQ. Uh, my name's Julie Cotter, and I'm just going to be um, emceeing this first little bit this morning. Okay, so let's get started. With no further ado, I'd like to introduce Professor Barbara de la Harp. Barbara is the Executive Dean of our Faculty of Business, Education, Law and Arts here at USQ, and she's going to uh, welcome you and uh, tell you a bit about the program. Thanks, Great. Barbara. Thanks, Julie. Good morning, everybody. Um, I would like to begin by acknowledging and paying respect to the traditional custodians of the land, the Jarawa and Gaibal people on which this meeting takes place, and to pay my respect to elders both past and present. As Julia said, my name is Barbara de la Harp and I'm the Executive Dean of the Faculty of Business, Education, Law and Arts. And I'm absolutely delighted to be here this morning to be part of launching this awesome program. I think that's the word Rita uses everywhere and it's also on the, the website. It's so important to have things uh, for the advancement of women in regional and remote enterprises. Celebratory events like this are so special and so fulfilling for me in, in the role that I do as Executive Dean. They absolutely stand out and truly make my heart sore when I'm at the really beautiful end of my role which is to celebrate and um, to join with people with passion and energy and, and people who want to do wonderful things. So what a wonderful start to my day, I hope, and I know it's your day too, and a fantastic beginning of an end to the week. So absolutely delighted. First of all, I wanted to just start off with a, a second of all, I guess now, a very big thank you to you. So it starts with you. It really does start with you. And again, if you've been on the website, that's the big standout strap line that stands there and really caught my attention. Um, and I believe that it really does. Things like this start with someone special, a spark, somebody who's prepared to put their shoulder to the wheel. That's someone who wants to make something happen. So for me, in, in my over the years of working at academia, these people, have drive and energy, they have self-confidence, an internal locus of control, high tolerance of ambiguity, low fear of failure, self-imposed standards that are way up there, they take initiative, they post take personal responsibility, they moderate their risks, they have a long-term view of where they want to go, they use money, I love this one, as a measure, not merely an end, they use feedback and resource as well, they engage in continuous pragmatic problem solving, and the last one, they set really clear goals. Do these sound familiar to you? Don't be shy. <laughs> Even if you're doing a little internal, yes, yes, <laughs> to some of them. Not everybody has every single one, but to some of them. Because you know, these are the behavioral characteristics of entrepreneurs. Um, and these were identified, it's, it was awesome to me, 40 years ago, by a big study that was done by Jeffrey Timmons and colleagues at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology. And his work, or their work, is still repeated, repeated. So I think, I hope it's become part of the seminal literature in the entrepreneurial behavioural space. So today is the official launch of the Entrepreneurship Capacity Building Program, which is a collaboration between the University of Southern Queensland, its partners, uh, Queensland Rural, Regional and Remote Women's Network, Startup Toowoomba and Fire Station 101. You're going to hear lots more about this, and you probably know it, but I just want to go over it again, that really at the heart of this program is to help rural, regional, and remote women entrepreneurs create the ventures, businesses, initiatives of their dreams, and that are around their lives. So a very heartfelt thank you to many people. As I said, the, the, the things like this don't just happen. And how can I not thank Professor Rita Weisner, who is our driving force behind the initiative and who gathered together collaborators Alison Marks, president of QRRRWN, Chad Renando from Fire Station 101, Joy Taylor, community manager for Canvas co-working space, David Massfield, Startup Toowoomba, um, Activator, director of Startup Toowoomba and president of Canvas Co-working Inc, 
and a number of UBSQ staff members. So we've got Julie Cotter, who you just met as the director of our centre, Asta Malhota, who's a vice chancellor's fellow, uh, Associate Professor Koshet Alam, who's an applied economist, and Peter Murray, who's the head of school. So an awesome group and a fantastic team. And Rita told me that this program has taken two years in what would you call incubation? What's the language? Incubation stage? Um, because it was conceived, I love that word, it gave me such a developmental kind of metaphor and being all women, it was just such a, I don't know, it held special meaning to just to see that word. Um, two years ago when Rita had a, a conversation with Georgie Somerset and I, I, I think you might know her, she's the former president of the Q, I've got to get this yeah. right, Q, um, and Rita just said, oh, I just wish I could find the funding for, um, to do something for rural women capacity building in our region, where, where we're located, where we're situated, give back to people that are around us. And the, the answer was, let's do it. And if you know Rita, it gets done. So here we are today. So a huge thank you then to the um, uh, Department of Industry, Innovation and Science, because they saw the benefit in this, they funded it and so here we are today. So in closing, a really heartfelt welcome to this program. Um, I know it will stimulate entrepreneurial activity and behaviour. It will create important networks and linkages, help maximise growth in addition to providing access to mentors, expert advice and new markets. All things that I think are good for women, leadership and growth, and in fact means leadership and growth. So, I am officially pleased to declare the WIRE program officially launched. <laughs> today um, so I really just want to take um, 30 seconds just to say welcome here today thanks for coming along and you know seeing the potential in a program like this um, I'll talk a lot more about the co-creation and we're going to do a practical session today on that where you tell us what you need how you want it etc um, so all I want to say at the moment is you take your time you take your energy you take your effort you take away your time from work this morning to come here today, and I thank you for that. And I'm really looking forward to helping you with your journeys, whether you have that idea and you don't know how to actually what to make with that idea or how to develop something. Or if you already have a business and you want to scale it up. Or if you're in an organization and you want to progress your journey as a career woman in your current organization, but you want to do that through entrepreneurial behavior, this is the home for you. Um, I'll talk a little bit more about what makes us unique a bit later on, but welcome here today. Um, I would like to just introduce um, our project management team. Uh, Alison Mobs, um, if you can just um, come up, Alison. Uh, Alison um, Mobs, she's the <coughs> president of Curran. Um, and I'll talk a little bit more about how the um, program was conceived a, a little more than a couple of years, years ago, ago now. A few now. years ago Absolutely. now. Yeah. That's right. Uh, but Alison and Curran uh, is really instrumental in um, getting the word out there because they have such good linkages into the entire Queensland. Uh, but we've already started co-creating the program also with Curran Board a number of years ago. So it's, it's idea in the making and I'll talk a little bit more about that later. Um, Alison, um, uh, we're looking forward to working with you on this program. We're looking forward to work with, working with Kieran on this program because we've got some exceptional women in that particular organisation as well. So thank you very much. Thank if you, you maybe just want to say your 30 um, seconds as well. <laughs> uh, so Kieran is so excited that we have finally launched this program and, um, and great credit to Rita for her persistence in making that happen. Um, you know, one of the qualities of, of an entrepreneur is persistence and she certainly has that in spades. Um, so a few years ago when Kieran was talking about this program with USQ, um, we talked about what it meant and how we could make it work and um, it certainly has developed and changed and morphed into the project that you will hopefully all now be a part, well you are already as of today, 
a part of. So really looking forward to designing a program that will suit the needs of women all across rural, regional and remote Queensland, no matter where they are, no matter what stage their business is in, no matter what their access to high speed internet and, um, and where, what industry they'd like to work in. So it's a really exciting time for QRAM and um, we're looking forward to working with USQ and with Fire Station 101 and Startup Toowoomba um, to make it a reality for our Queensland women and see how we can replicate them to Australia and internationally. So it'd be fantastic to, uh, to watch this space. Thank you very much, Alice. So we pay them to come up. They, um, she and David, uh, they start up to Wumba. They are other partner on this project, um, and we have done some work previously as well, especially for women in the international space. We've run quite a few programs in that area, um, and love working with you guys. So maybe you want to also please welcome the women here today. Yes, wonderful. Thank you, Rita. So uh, we also are really excited to be part of this collaborative partnership. Um, USQ and Curan and Fire Station 101. Um, by coming together, we have the ability to share this much further afield than what we could ever do on our own. Um, so we're really grateful that we can be part of this. So um, for many of you in the room, I do already know you and, and you know me. Um, we've been working for the last few years to build the startup ecosystem here in Toowoomba and, and the surrounding area. So now to have this opportunity to actually take it further afield throughout Queensland to introduce you to women across the state. A lot of them you may know as well, so bringing them together and start working more collaboratively across the whole region and then even further afield and, and international if we can as well. For any of you who know me well, I do like to travel. Um, so, <laughs> so we'll expand it as far as we can. Um, but I, I would see this you know, as a huge benefit for our region um, to also be able to step up and show what we have already done and how things are working here and how they can work in other parts of the state as well. There's lots of small groups of, you know, little pockets of people doing great stuff all around the place, but often they're unknown. Um, so this network will, you know, we'll just bolster that. We'll let people become known further afield and expand their business, scale it, um, you know, showcase what they're really doing and what they're doing well. So we're really excited to be part of it. So thank you. Thank you, Jen. Uh, Anne Marie Walton, um, she's from Fire Station 101, Chair Trinando. Um, he's the uh, community manager there and um, he's kind of heading up Fire Station 101. But Anne Marie is very much co. Uh, working with him and she's also a project um, uh, officer on our particular project. So from, from Fire Station 101, uh, just a few words please. Oh, well, welcome from us. Uh, Fire Station 101 is based in Ipswich, so whilst a lot of people wouldn't consider us as regional, um, anyone who's Brisbane based certainly does. Um, and it's an opportunity for us to provide a bit of a, um, a bridge uh, towards Toowoomba and all the outlying regions. Um, and to develop stronger collaboration within the regions, the rural and, and the remote people, which is really exciting, particularly for me um, as a female. Um, I'm a startup myself. Uh, we're, we're quite new. Fire Station 101 isn't yet 12 months old. So, um, as an innovation hub, we're a startup. We have 50% um, female membership, which is fantastic. Uh, and um, outside of uh, Startup Toowoomba, there's probably not a lot of. Um, other co-working space innovation hubs, accelerators that can attest to that. Um, personally, I have my own startup, again, only 12 months old, and it's wonderful for me to be able to um, step into the opportunities that Fire Station, um, Kieran, Wire, USQ provides to collaborate with women, and that's one of the things I think is going to be a huge benefit to all of us here and all the people who are coming on. This collaboration, this community that's been built and how we can help each other, and even just at morning tea, I've. Um, I've met some fantastic, interesting people and been able to introduce them to some other fantastic, interesting people, lots of people who can already help each other and that's one of the things that um, WIRE is going to offer, not just us here, but all over Queensland and then, as um, Rita and Joy said, hopefully across to the world. So it's very exciting and um, glad to be involved. Thank you very much. <laughs> Wonderful. I was a bit concerned because I'm a bit of a stickler for time. <laughs> and then uh, when news kind of, they were, came a bit late and everything happened a bit late and ABC came a bit late, I'm like, okay. But we're actually running a little bit ahead of time. <laughs> 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 So, 
Okay. Thank you. Sorry, Thanks Rita. very much. Um, I would like to just, uh, before Julie goes, uh, Julie um, is the director of the Australian Centre for Sustainable Business and Development. I'm part of that centre. I'm also part of the Faculty of Business uh, Business, Education, Law and Arts. <laughs> but my, my work, my research work, my capacity building work very much sit within the centre. And I work very, very closely uh, with Julie, um, have worked with her as um, Deputy Director of the Centre for, for a number of years. And um, Julie, your support in um, our work, your support for women in, in rural, rural uh, 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 regional areas is just um, magnificent. And I mean, you, you involved, uh, Julie is very much involved in the agribusiness space, so she works with, um, in this particular space as well. Julie herself, very much an entrepreneurial leader as well, um, you know, as academics. Uh, for us, people like Julie and myself these days, it's not about you know, sky in the pie research anymore. It's really about doing research that's practical, uh, that have impact, that makes a difference. And that's what we're all about, and I know that's all your, your work's all about that. Thank you very much for opening our session today. Thanks, Fred. A real uh, pleasure yeah. to be here, and, and I just wish everyone uh, all the best. I, um, I hope you get a lot out of the program. Um, thank okay. you. Thank you. Okay, I would like to talk to you a little bit this morning about your journey, your business journey or your community venture starts with you. That's our motto in this program. And, you know, when, when you talk about success factors, there's so many different factors out there that, um, that leads to success for women. And my work with women has mainly been, um, in, like I said, in a research uh, capacity, very much around, um, you know, conducted a, a few hundred interviews with women and their journeys and what works and what doesn't work, um, but also with a whole range of capacity building programs, which I'll talk a little bit later. And the question I always ask them is, um, how do you see yourself? Because I want to find out how do they identify themselves in the entrepreneurial space? And some of these women are quite phenomenal in what they do and the businesses they run or the community ventures that they run. And very few of them would say to me, I'm an entrepreneur. I say, no, no, I'm not an entrepreneur. <laughs> So, I, I guess in our program, we do want to propose that you start thinking of yourself as an entrepreneur because if you recognize and you create and you act on opportunities and if you can say yes to that question and this next one, if you identify opportunities and you create value, and sometimes significant value. Or, if you form undertakings, or initiatives, or projects, or a business, a venture, and you release value, and you exploit those opportunities through being, bringing together resources, physical, um, financial, your team, that means you are entrepreneurial. And I guess, Maybe the emphasis would be less in this program just on calling it an entrepreneur. It doesn't really matter what we call it. But I really want to emphasize the importance of our own behavior as women in this space is that we are entrepreneurial women. And if you're an entrepreneurial woman, we think in a particular way. And I'm sure just the fact that you're here today, the fact that you took the time to come here today and that you're interested in the program there's definitely a seed brewing. And some of you are here I know as well, already running some successful businesses and you know, also looking to scale that up. So I think right now, the moment is now to start thinking about yourself and of yourself as I'm an entrepreneurial woman, because that's the women we want in our program. Now, when I talk about um, the concept you know, this morning. I, I'm not specifically going to talk about a business because a lot of you may have a particular idea and you want to start something in your community and not necessarily profit driven. But even if you're in the non-profit sector, the same principles apply of entrepreneurial behavior. You still need to get find money somewhere to actually take the venture forward. 
So, you know, it doesn't just happen out there. So the same principles apply. So I will talk a lot about the term venture as an overall term for whatever it is you may want to take forward on your journey. Now, usually, and I, I think the session now, um, the short session that I'm going to do, be, do with you, and everything this morning is very much about awareness, looking inside yourself. And when I, present, when I, when I uh, started um, thinking about what am I going to talk about today, and you know, it's about your journey starts with you, you know, our journeys always start with some, some catalyst, the reason why we're doing something. So think a little bit about what's your catalyst, why, you know, for your particular interest in entrepreneurship. My catalyst was, you know, I was born in Namibia, African rural country. And uh, I was very young at that stage. Um, you know, you have uh, rural women coming with little bubby on the back and they're carrying all these things on their head and they're on their way to work. And my mum used to say to me, look at those women, they add value to their families because they, they earn money, they do their work, they, they, they add values to the communities, they add value to the economy. And that kind of created the sense of, it doesn't matter who you are out there, you can contribute and you can add value. And that is what we're all about. And I guess that was my catalyst. And I kind of looked at my journey and then um, later on in the last five, six years, really becoming involved in um, running, conducting entrepreneurial programs for international women uh, in Bangladesh, Sri Lanka, um, uh, Nepal, um, Pakistan, I'll talk a little bit about that because we're going to run another event in May where we will have um, these women there as well. But for me, it was very much a line that was kind of came through. So think a little bit about where did your interest come from? Why? This morning, I want to focus very much on the question of why. Why we do things and not just that we do things. Now, I guess a lot of my work has really revolved around, you know, what are some critical factors when women actually want to progress their entrepreneurial journeys? And I want to talk this morning more about um, factors that you already have. We all have those factors. And it's not necessarily about uh, one or two factors. If you have this, then you're going to be great and you're going to be successful. But it is about being aware of those factors in you and how you can utilize those factors within your entrepreneurial journey. The four, uh, first really I want to kick off by talking about four critical factors of success. And then I will end up off with a, with a final factor. And the first one is purposeful uh, passion. The next one is savvy and ca capability or savviness, business savvy, courage and luck. And we, I want you to look at the role that that play in your entrepreneurial journey. I will make all of these um, available and we're also um, taking videos this morning so everything will be available by the end of the program after I've done 15 pop-ups right throughout Queensland. Mm -hmm. We'll have it all on the, on the internet for today will be on there as well as the slides and everything. Now, with, in relation to factor one, and that's about our clarity around a purposeful passion. And when we, when we think about business plans and so forth, we, you know, it's really it's a myth that a business starts with a plan, a written plan, and you've got to plan it all out up front. It starts with a why in ourself, in our hearts, as to why the heck am I feeling so much love for this concept? or for this idea that I actually want to do something with it. That's where it starts. It doesn't start with a business plan. And the why really informs the what and the how. But we first got to have that why, clarity. We need to have clarity around that because that's going to impact on so many other aspects in your journey. So the why is really manifest, manifested uh, through our authentic purpose and it's really the soul 
of our idea as we take it forward. Now, the purpose, of, uh, purpose and intensity of feeling. If you are passionate about a particular idea, or maybe there's some of you that don't have a particular idea yet, that's okay, because we're going to have a quick look at that in a minute. But it's also about endurance. And I, you know, Barbara was talking about um, the issue of conceived. And for us as women, it is true, you know. It, it's, it's very much, to me, it's almost like a, a birthing process of um, you have this idea and you, you know, it's always that maternal instinct of I've got this idea and I want it to crawl and then I want it to walk and I feel very protective about it. And I want it to get some um, wings to fly as it goes forward. But it's not just about the idea, it's about the nuance in the idea. It's about we may have two women with exactly the same idea. But what is your nuance, your differentiation, your different kind of fashion that's driving you forward? Because that is what's going to really make a difference as you go forward. And it's very much about our commitment. How committed are we to take that forward? And we all know when we have a great idea, or when we're passionate about ideas, it's contagious. We want to tell other people about it. You know, we, we, we want to share that. And that's how I feel about the Y project. You know, I share it everywhere and I tell stories. And Passion is about what you purposely and insanely love doing. And I think it's about getting in touch with that. If you can get in touch with that in every step of your journey, and certain parts of your journey is more pronounced than others, but especially in the beginning part, those of you who are sitting here that are thinking, yeah, you know, I want to take this forward. Passion is very, very important, and also how you express that thing as you go forward. And why it's so important <coughs> is because it's impacting your beliefs and your values. It's impacting specific capabilities that you're going to need as you move forward, and what resources you need to draw in. It's impacting, it's going to impact your behavior, how you behave. Is that in line with your core and your passion? And ultimately, you know, it's, it's also impacting on the tools that you're going to use and the tactics that you're going to use. However, purpose with passion is not lust. <laughs> I don't know, you know, have you, you know, all the trends going on at the moment, so many new things coming our way, and you think, yeah, that's a great idea. Yeah, that's a great idea. Yeah, that's a great idea. And we fall in lust with all these wonderful ideas out there. And, you know, I've, I've had some uh, conversations with some entrepreneurs that come and have a chat to me and talk about their journeys. And I talked to a woman the other day, and you know, she had kind of four almost different startups that happened in one year because then it's this idea and then it's that and then it's over there and then it's over there. Um, but nothing actually got off the ground and it's because she didn't ask the why question. <coughs> so it is connecting with our core. And purposeful passion and commitment is most prominent at this early stage and making sure that you are clear about that. When we grow as a business, you know, it probably becomes a little bit less pronounced, but it's still there, it drives us forward. But when it becomes very much pronounced again later on, if you're in the lucky position, or not lucky position, but because you've worked very hard down the track and you've got a business and you want to expand, and that's when it's you're going to become very much aware of your passion again because it's your baby and now you've got to make a decision, am I going to expand? Because then I may lose control of, over my idea. I may have to bring in partners. I have to sell off my business to get more reach. And the problem with that is there's limitations to love for our idea. There's limitations in it that very often we're so passionate about something that we don't strategize. We don't draw up a plan. We don't make a plan systematically as to how this is going to go forward. Yes, sure, we're going to change direction every so often. And 
also you have wonderful ideas and you have this passion but that's what it is you may have an idea here today those of you who haven't started a business yet that's had this idea for 10 years and you haven't done anything about it you know you're passionate about it you want to talk about it but you haven't started so that's the problem sometimes with passion and the other aspect, like I say, when you extend or you have to expand, sometimes you want to control too much. And then we've got to make a decision, okay, well, am I willing to let go for to get better reach with what I want to achieve? Okay, so let's explore and share your purposeful passion. So I'm going to give you a few questions. And you'll see there's some um, little notes on the table. So everybody just grab a little one sticky I just have to mention because he's standing out right. <laughs> the intention was to introduce Porsche a little bit later. because uh, he's part of the USQ team. He's a very integral part of our team. He's in the background and he's a prolific researcher. So he's gonna take all the data in this project and help us to analyze and to take all of it out in high level publications. Etc. So, Koshi, thanks a lot for joining us today, okay? And uh, he's done a lot of research in regional areas as well, with startups, SMEs, etc. So, I thought I'll just mention that. Okay, so everybody's got a sticky note. Now, there's some of you here that's you know, already very successful women, you know, case in point is over here. You know, we've got a few people that I know, um, you know, we invited on the panel today, very su successful in their own right. And you're probably very good at, you know, telling other people about your passion. But just go with the flow. So for the next few minutes, I want you to explore your purposeful passion. And then after that, um, we're just gonna share it around a little bit because we want to connect. We wanna tell other people about our passion. So first of all, you know, you, you have to write quite small because I, you, you can't write too much. I don't want a, a five minute spiel that's very short in one paragraph I want this together. What is your name? What do you love to do? And it may not be, you know, it, if you haven't started or you ha just have an idea at the moment or you don't even know what your idea is, what do you love to do? Do you love to write? Do you have to design, teach, talk, crunch numbers, what it is? But think a little bit about it within an entrepreneurial context for today. Why do you love doing it so much? What are your most principally or especially qualified to teach other people? So that particular idea or that particular passion that you have, what about it makes you the person to actually teach other pe people about it? Who do you want to do it for? What do these people want or need that you give your skill or passion to them? And how do they change as a result of what you give them? I'm gonna give you one example. I'm gonna give you one of two examples. I've had a very, very strong passion earlier when I was a bit younger. I uh, was a very good tennis player in my early days. And uh, so that was a major passion, took up a lot of my life at one stage in my life. And currently, for a number of years now, uh, my passion to really help women progressing their journeys through entrepreneurial behavior. So I can quickly give you a quick example of what I want. Do you want me to use tennis or the entrepreneurial one? Tennis. Tennis, tennis. 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 <laughs> okay. So for example, um, when after, um, uh, after my, well, I won't give you the background, but, and I'll, I'll actually do that while I'm talking about this. I was a tennis coach after I played competitive tennis. So, and I'm very passionate about it. So my talking about to my tennis would be something like, hi, my name's Rita Weisner. I'm a tennis coach. You know, um, what makes me so passionate about tennis coaching is the fact that I work with young children. And when you teach children, they learn to focus, they learn to concentrate, they learn to control a ball, and when you see that excitement in their eyes, 
it's just a wonderful feeling. However, um, you know, what I usually do in my Pathenas coaching as well, I'm not one of those coaches standing at the net just feeding balls, because you can't really teach like that, you've got a role model. I would do every movement with them. The forehand is a backhand, is a smash. Every movement I would make, they can see what I'm doing and learn from me. And that's what makes me a little bit different from other coaches. What these kids usually want from me is to help them to actually hit the ball much harder, much faster than their mate next door. But also, they see on TV that they want to progress their tennis, they want to become one of these big star players. And I help them to actually, in that journey, to progress that for them. And, uh, you know, maybe you should consider, you know, Johnny over there, you know, he would really <coughs> love to come and meet some of my other kids. That would be my spiel for a tennis player, for a tennis coach. That's better, probably, than just saying, hi, I'm a tennis coach, what do you do? You know, in, in one minute, they know exactly who I am, they know what I'm passionate about, they know why I'm passionate about it, they know who I'm teaching, etc. So that's what I want you to do now. I'm going to give you just a few minutes, probably about three, four minutes, just to think, and it doesn't matter what it is, but think about it a little bit, start your journey now, and think about your you know, moving forward. What is maybe that seed that's, is it maybe cooking that wonderful meals that you make and you want to do something with that? Are you an exercise, um, exercise expert and you, you, you're so good at, you know all the programs out there, but you want to turn that into a business? What is it? And then we'll have some more advanced entrepreneurs already sitting here. I'd like to listen to some of them as well. So I'm just gonna, uh, just quickly, three, four minutes, and try and mould this together just in one little paragraph. And Marie, because I know you're a startup, you should know what you're doing. So let's quickly give us an example here. Hello, my name's Anne Marie Walton, and I love to help busy parents find some fun in the way that they interact with their children. I love doing this because it helps build creative thinking and communication skills into the current screen generation that we have developing coming forward. Um, having two happy and well-adjusted adult children uh, means I'm confident to share um, uh, my skills and resources to help others. And my passion um, helps alleviate guilt in, um, that's associated with parents and, um, and means better parenting outcomes for adults and happier kids to develop into the leaders of our future. You know that's exactly me. what you said. <laughs> Get some volunteers. Who wants to quickly share? Yes, here you go. It doesn't surprise anyone who knows me. <laughs> I'm Anna Bartlett and I love to make and teach art. I love it because I live it. Um, the outfit today. Actually, I used to work in an office, so putting on colour today was just fabulous. Um, I've been an artist um, my whole life and a teacher of art for over six years. My main business is paint logs where it's perfect for beginners and we paint, I'm not used to writing this down actually, um, and we paint together and they take home a painting that's strung, varnished and ready to hang. That has grown into workshops for more intermediate artists and business groups and the result is a sense of achievement, a connection to your creative gene and a fabulous memory with something tangible to show for it. Wonderful, thank you very much. Okay. Um, Anybody else? Yes. Why am I doing this? <laughs> <laughs> uh, my name's Penny. I'm a writer and a storyteller. Um, I do lots of creative writing and non-fiction writing, but the thing I'm particularly thrilled about at the moment and about to launch in a fortnight is a site called Find Perfect Peace. I create guided meditations based on symbol and mythology, and I have a long background in anthropology and stuff like that. Uh, I love it because I have the power to create worlds and to share them and to bring people into them. I teach people to use their imagination and to tap into their intuition, and my work helps others to lose fear and worries and gain self-belief, centeredness and calm. Wonderful. Thank you. Because we can't do this a whole morning, I just want to quickly you to turn around to the person next to you and quickly tell them about your passion.
quickly move on. So, you've got already a, a, a start of a pitch as you go out today and start building on that. You certainly are uh, going to uh, get the tools, find the tools in our program to actually perfect your pitch as you go forward. But start thinking about it, start digging deep about your passion because that's where you're starting. Factor two, savvy and capability. You know, it's a little bit removed almost from the passion that we feel for our idea. But it's really what happens in the middle there. And like I said before, we, ha we may have a wonderful idea, but we're sitting on that idea and we just do not take it further. What happens there in the middle? That's what this program is all about. It's about what's happening in that middle. It's very, very important to also then start reflecting on our own savviness, our business savviness around and how we live out our savvy and where's our strength and where's our weaknesses. And there's four types of savviness. You know, you get your academic and your book savvy and that, that is important, you know, for entrepreneurial women to read widely and to read about things. But, you know, obviously I'm working in an academic environment as well and, you know, a lot of academics are just in the theoretical space, don't know how to take it to the next level or don't know how to make it practical. So that's not enough just to read and just to find out and analyse what's happening, even though you may absolutely love it. But it's part of being savvy. The other aspect, practical savviness. Practical savviness is... You know, some of us are a lot more practical than academic. And it's about loving to explore things and to try new things out and to dig in and, you know, experience everything. And that's how we learn. And that's how we pick up our savvy. That's how we live out our savvy in our entrepreneurial journey. You know, so I, I don't know, um, what is it, Anna? Mm -hmm. I don't, I, I've never met you before today and I don't know about your business, but just listening to you, I'm thinking, you know, just, the, you know, you, you're practical savvy, I'm sure. You know, you, you're probably doing webinars and running online courses and um, online workshops. Probably have already done one or two books. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's that practical savvy that she's already living, and I could just look at Arthur. Yep, I can see what's happening. So people savvy. We cannot really progress in our entrepreneurial journey without that people savviness. It's about that connectiveness, connectedness, and really trying to analyze how my behaviour and how my business or my ventures behavior is impacting on other people and very often you know we do come across we find ourselves in con conflict sometimes with clients and customers or you know just people that want to work with us but ultimately it's all about communication and reflecting on ourselves first and see how we can get greater engagement into our passion and we do that by words by expressions and by engaging people in our passion Creative savvy is is something quite special. If you if you you know, and, and I'm sure there's a lot of creative savvy is going on here as well. But it's you know those individuals that really so natural about thinking out of the box, you know, connecting the dots, looking at trends and bringing that together, and then coming up with new ideas. If you find people like that, try and pull them in your venture, because they are the ones. If you're not already one of them they are the ones that will take your venture further forward. So we do need to reflect on where we sit and you know, we may all have all four of these, but ultimately we want to improve on all our savviness to actually get to being a business savvy woman. So with savviness, it's all about these things and these are the kind of things as well that will be part of our program and there's so many more. But it, that's where we, you know, the business model development. How can we progress our business by creating a unique business model? Or if you're already in a business, how can I innovate my current business model to make it a lot better, make it more innovative? How do I promote my business through digital media? How do I connect with audiences in the rest of Australia and in Bangladesh and Nepal and overseas, or in Canada and UK? 
So really the formula to me for savviness is very much about that trend spotting to try and pick up on the next, where is this going? And I'm currently, um, we, we're currently in the WIRE program also working on a showcase series. So I'm interviewing uh, probably 20 to 25 um, women in this space. And um, I talked to Carmel, uh, Carmen Roberts, for example, the other day, she's out in Roma. And, uh, you know, already spotted a trend a number of years ago, you know, in terms of the, the, the cloud working that she's currently doing. She's way ahead of her time already in terms of what, you know, her, where her current business is going. So it's identifying those trends and where we're going with that. <coughs> but very, very important as well, something about savviness is not just to focus on performance targets, but constantly looking at the journey. How did we get there? Being mindful, what did we learn from, <coughs> from our journey as we moved forward? The third one, courage. Courage or guts. And that's sometimes where we as passionate women sit and it's like, okay, well, we have this little idea, it's so good. And then we see somebody else taking the idea and they're already doing it. I'm just sitting here thinking, what am I gonna do? And it's often about the courage to take that step and actually making it happen. So, First of all, it's that courage to initiate. And those of you who haven't started yet initiating, today is the day when you start to initiate. You've already done that by talking about your passion. Today, you're giving your first step towards actually making your passion or your idea a reality. But that's very, very difficult. That's what, it takes a lot of courage. The courage to endure. Um, you know, in all my interviews that I've done with women over the last few years, it's the fear of failure. That's why they don't do it. <coughs> uh, you know, when people come and talk to me, I say, well, you know, I just can't get this off the ground. I know, you know. And it's because they're holding themselves back because of that fear of failure. But it's also around the courage to evolve and not just hanging on to our passion, but actually to let it grow up and give that child some wings to fly and take it your reach much further. And if there's changes that's gonna happen in your venture, you know, take calculated risks around that and the willingness to do that. Courage is very important because as human beings, we don't like change. You know, we like change, you know, usually like the, the status quo. And really a courageous individual isn't someone who doesn't feel fear, is someone who acts despite fear. Uh, one of the best books that I read every now and then is Feel, uh, Feel the Fear and Do It. It's just a, such a good book, you know, I've, I've read it every now and then, I pick it up if there's something and I'll be like, okay, well, feel, feel the fear and do it anyway. That's what it is, it's about feeling the fear, we all feel in fear, but it's about doing it anyway. <coughs> But ultimately, the bottom line is ideas mean nothing with practical action. So for me, the, the core of courage is actually doing it and not just speaking about it. Just not, it's not about words, but it's actually taking that next step. And that's where we're going to help you. That's where the program comes in, uh, is to actually help support you through those fears and looking how you can overcome that in order to actually go to the next level, take the next step. So experience um, feature into how we deal with fear. Uh, but, and I'm not gonna go through all of this because we have cognizant of the time. But one thing that's helped me a lot very often is to say, well, what's the worst case scenario that can happen? You know, and I often say that to, to women <laughs> out there as well. You know, they're in a job and they absolutely hate their job to go there every day. I was like, okay, well, what's the worst case scenario? Maybe, you know, you, you take your passion, you, you start creating a business in a very, um, you know, uh, significant way, uh, in a very planned way, but you draw on your passion. In one year down the track, if it doesn't work, you go back to your dead-end job if you really want to. <laughs> but, you know, you're going to make it work.
last factor, chance or luck. Now, in our journey, you will recognize chance and luck. But sometimes we have some really lucky occurrences happening in our lives that actually moved us forward for some reason. We can't, you know, I always say we can't do much about luck. <coughs> to me, it's how we set ourselves up to actually try and navigate chance or luck. And there's a couple of ways in which we can do that. The first one is the chance or a luck attitude. Which is to, oh, you know, I'm not lucky, you know, it's never going to happen for me. But actively start developing a chance or a luck attitude, which consists of, first of all, humility. Knowing your own limitations. Really acknowledging others around you and drawing on their, on their expertise, on their successes. But also then, from, coming from that is intellectual uh, curiosity. It's like, okay, well, you know, I do have limitations and that makes me curious. I'm going to find out more about things, how it works, why it works that way. Together with optimism, which all comes down to the self-fulfilling prophecy. And I see that play out in organisations, but also in entrepreneurial field every day, is we attract what we focus on. And it's about creating that expectation of moving forward in an optimistic way. Yeah, luck's going to happen, chances going to happen all around us. But having that attitude is going to come here, stand you in very, very good stead. I think um, probably just before I get to the fifth factor, I think I just want to say about this as well. It's the luck network. That the luck, the lucky network, together with your attitude. They say, uh, and I think it was Lee. He's the, I think the researcher that, that talked about this. In in hundred people that we meet, um, probably about fifteen of those, we. You know, it won't really negatively impact on our lives if we don't know much about them or we never come across them again. Five of that hundred people, we connect with instantly. We connect with very well, cherish them, grow them as your network. The other 80% is more about the luck aspect. Some of them may be really good for your business and that's where you get your networks out. We start selling your passion out there, spreading your passion and you may just come, ac uh, come across individuals that you can link up with, that can open doors for you. And geez, this program started just, you know, we kind of picked up in January physically with this project, but just in the last few weeks, all of a sudden, you know, I come across, and Joy would say all the same, we come across all these networks out there that want to be part of the program, that can open doors for us. So. Keep that in mind. Your network that you create, nurture them because they are so important in moving your um, your your journeys forward. Now, this is uh, a little bit a little bit of a survey on entrepreneurial aptitude. Um, and my glasses. It's about these four things that I just spoke about. It draws from the work of Chan, <coughs> Harrington, and Shin Chan. <laughs> Thank you. Next few minutes, quickly have a look how you sit on these four factors. Are you mainly a fashion person or are you savvy? And you're going to have a spread across, potentially a spread over all four. But it's about identifying being self aware of where we actually sit and where's our limitations as well. So, for each pair of statements below, you have a left-hand column and the right-hand column. Circle the one that feels most true. So, on the first line, you have my intellectual ability versus my initiative to do things that others, others dread it. And you've got to pick one of the two every time. So, just pick one of the two every time. Circle it. And after completing each section, you just count the number of A's, B's, C's, D's, etc., and then enter it in the sum beneath each section. And then once you're done, 
on the other side of the page is your scoring sheet where you just add it all up and put your score down. <laughs> Yeah, I'm just doing it for the survey. It's a bit of the survey stuff, so you can cut that across the and just look at it there. Of, I guess, an awareness of maybe where you're inclined to be most. What's your dominant aspect in terms of these four <laughs> factors? There's no right or wrong answer. Certainly, I mean, if you have a one on savvy, you know, you're part of this WIRE program, perfect, because you are going to learn the business skills. You're going to learn the tools to actually make it happen for yourself. However, you know, we only have limited time when you, when you move forward on your entrepreneurial journey. You have so much you've got to take. You've got, you got family and you've got all these balls up there. So sometimes, if you, if you, if you don't have all the time and you, you're not all that great at all the savvy stuff, sometimes get somebody to help you with that. Get somebody to compliment you on that. And that's where your team comes, comes in. But these are all sort of things that we're going to explore in the program as we move forward. So to finish off this presentation, the last factor, focus plus consistency. To me, this is the one aspect of, you know, like I said, we have all these balls in the air. And if we only have the luxury to take our passion and learn all the tools, and actually take that next step, but it doesn't work like that in reality always. So, focus, when I say focus, it's just to keep your idea or your, 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 your venture creation or progression of your journey at the top of your mind and not let all these other balls interfere too much. So, you can't work on it full time necessarily some of you are still working, you want, a 10 you want to be a 10% entrepreneur and you want to do something on the side, which is fine. However, it's about keeping it in front of your mind, spending an hour every day or maybe two hours three times a week on it, but not let it disappear. It needs to be a focus in your life in order for you to move it forward. That is reality. And I'm hoping that with this program, what we will bring to your journey is accountability. Because that's where things sometimes go wrong. We don't have somebody keeping us accountable. You know, it's like, oh, nobody knows, so I'm not going to do it. But if you have somebody keeping you accountable, you know, and you've got to check in the next week how you're going, <laughs> and you've got a problem. And consistency is continuously, just consistently doing something. That's how we move forward. But health is wealth and take care of your health because even some of the women entrepreneurs that I'm interviewing now and that I have you know over many years e one of the issues a lot of them fall sick because it just gets too much too much stress etc so don't forget about your health is wealth and another strong focus in your life should be your your health because that's absolutely paramount for your entrepreneurial journey to move forward. Mm. Okay, thank you very much. That's all I have for you for this particular presentation, and we'll move on to the next one now. Mm. Thank you. <laughs> okay, now we have a bit of a panel here today, uh, and of uh, just uh, quite extraordinary women, and uh, we thought it would be a good idea to ask them a few questions. So um, can we just have the panel coming to the front? Now I had a bit of a quick look around your the tables as well in terms of the scores and I saw that courage is quite low on quite a few and uh, savvy is also quite low. Um, now remember we talk about courage in an entrepreneurial context, not general courage, because <coughs> it's different in an entrepreneurial context. So I'm going to ask one question and then I'm going to open it also to the audience for questions. But the first one has to do with courage. And it's about those moments of self-doubt. And that's what stops us from taking that step forward. So, Alison, 
You're pretty phenomenal in what you achieve in your life currently. Tell and I tell us a little bit about how do you conquer conquer your doubts? Well, it's a, I guess it's necessity as much as it is anything, but it's also um, you know, if I don't do it now, when will I do it? And have a go, bite off the biggest bite you can possibly bite, and chew as hard as you can. And if you don't know how to do it yet, that's okay. Go with it and learn it as you go. Um, they're the things that I say to myself when I you know, am a teacher and I'm in the middle of Charleville teaching children in, in Aminka and no idea even where Aminka is and, um, and then you know, transforming to bookkeeping for an ag business that I have absolutely no idea about and learning how to do bookkeeping and learning how to then do business planning. But just embrace the opportunity to learn something new and challenge yourself, I guess, to, to overcome that fear. And I guess in my performance background, the fear and the energy and the adrenaline that gives you those butterflies in your stomach that keeps you awake at night, that's actually the energy that will you, you can put into your business to, or into your whatever venture it is, to actually make it work. To say, great, I've got those feelings, that means I really want this to work. How can I use the energy that that's gonna create then to make it happen for me? Um, how do we conquer it? How do we control it? I would take as much, like you say, as much as you can, bite-sized pieces. My no, biggest bite you can. <laughs> <laughs> and, and that's a, probably the difference. Maybe that's why yeah. my courage is lower. I know I've got low courage too. Maybe <laughs> 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 a bigger mouth. Yeah, but I, I take a small bit. I know I can do that. Yep and then I'll take the next four bit. And I don't give up, I just continually take a little bit by little bit, a little bit, and continually do just the small amount. Yeah, courage, it's something that I struggle with on a day-to-day -day basis, and I think it's probably something that we all, as women, uh, probably deal with. Um, and I read somewhere that, you know, men will go into a job that they don't know how to do, and they'll just get in there and do it, but we doubt ourselves the whole step of the way. Um, so I, my philosophy is to, you know, bite off more than I can chew and then chew like mad and try to <laughs> and, and, and own it and um, um, also you know just just be brave just just the, the 30 more seconds you know like just kind of yeah like you're saying yeah, just, just keep on more. saying just a little bit more brave you know this, you just yeah. gotta deal with it you yeah, just gotta you've got it so yeah it's something that I'm still learning and something I think I'll always battle with um, like sitting up here today takes a lot of courage so yeah I think it's you just, you just got to do it. Please don't. Joy, uh, what about, um, <laughs> I'm asking you this question um, from your own perspective, but also you work with women, you know, start up to Umba, you know, it's about that first step, actually taking that first step. Tell us a little bit about your perspectives on that. Yeah, so I guess for myself, when I, when I have that issue where it's, okay, I'm about to start something new, um, I make sure that I tell other people. Um, and from that accountability perspective, if I've told someone that I'm going to do it, Oh, I better do it, you know, and, and that's just it. So I'm really fortunate, you know, David is, is my partner in business, partner in life, and, and very supportive. Um, I probably get away with a little bit more there, but if I tell, like, if I tell Lisa that I'm going to do something, well, shit, I just got to do it, because I said I would. So that's, that's how I get started. Thank you. Yeah, I guess, you know, the ladies have covered um, a lot of thoughts in my mind, but yeah, doubt is something that I have every day. And, and um, I think it's about embracing that. And, and for me, it's also about celebrating a win and then looking back at that and go, I did that, so I can do this. And so for, I'm, all, I'm a big believer in celebrating the successes that you have, even if they're just little. Um, but exactly like Joy said, um, I talk a lot to people about what I wanna do. So don't keep it bottled up inside you. I know sometimes you think, I don't want to tell too many people about this. What if they say it's not good? Or what if, tell everyone about it. You know, because then they'll start asking you, how's that going? <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, <laughs> um, and you know, I've, I've got a, a great husband as well and he works in a complete different industry. And so also talking to him about things. So for me, it's about just getting it out there. And also I love, mind mapping and drawing and, and pinning things on my wall and, and that just keeps me motivated. It has an awesome wall. Yeah. <laughs> Rita, can I add to that, that yeah. you know, I'm not sure if the other panel members might feel this way as well, but I often think, who do I think I am? How am I going to do this? Mm -hmm. you know, yeah. Oh my goodness, I've, sold, I've said I'm going to do this. 
who do I think I am? <laughs> and you just, you've really got to tell yourself, I'm just a person doing their best, coming with passion and heart from the right place. Yeah. And I don't just celebrate the achievements, I celebrate the failures as well, because they're many, mm. they're everywhere. You know, I'm stuck making beds in the motel on a Sunday morning, so I've got no staff, and you know, that's just, oh, I made a mistake again. But learn from your mistakes. <laughs> and, like, and that's, like, use them as an opportunity to say, well, I didn't get it right, but I tried. And the only people that don't make mistakes are the people that don't try. So have the courage to make those mistakes, own them, and move on. I find that when I talk to women, they have an imposter syndrome. Yeah. It's like, it's who am I to I actually do this? <laughs> right now, kick it out. No more imposter syndrome, okay? And also, you're amongst women now, so you know, share it with us. If you don't have anybody else to share it, share it with us. And there will be um, also vehicles for you to share your ideas in this program as well. Okay, so I've got a lot of questions, but I'm going to go to you guys. Judy, I thought it was fantastic that you ended your presentation with that slide about the health is wealth and the importance of the balancing multiple jobs and responsibilities that you have. And I was just curious how some of you may have found your what your ways are that you've been able to like maintain your health and yourself through the processes of of the whole entrepreneurship and the balancing of many different demands on your time and your life? Um, that's hard and I've got a seven and nine year old, I've got seven and nine year old children, um, a property, a business with an office in Toowoomba and in Wagga. Um, so juggling things is hard and then I have a social life with some highly demanding friends. Um, <laughs> But for me, you know, through my, my whole career, it's been about trying to find that ideal balance. You know, what is that ideal balance? But for me, it's if I feel good, um, I feel like I've got it. Um, I discovered, oh, a few years ago that for me it was about my health, was about my fitness. So my outlet, when you work mentally so hard all the time, I love to go running. I've found a real passion in, you know, fitness and exercise which helps me to mentally clear my mind. So I think I think it's about finding that thing, whether it is meditation or, you know, I'm at the other extreme where I'd rather go and punch a boxing bag for an hour. But it's finding that thing, it might be going for a long walk, you know, out in the paddock or whatever it is that makes you just let go of everything. Um, and I feel like, you know, in the last 12 months, I've really got that. And although my life is crazy, and some nights I might only get four or five hours sleep, I still love what I do and I feel good. Um, and I think if you can find that one thing that really makes you feel good and gives you the energy every day to keep going, um, then the balance finds itself. Exactly. Well, I also like boxing, so that's how let's go. <laughs> but um, yeah, so I know you know for us we have a, a routine which I'm a little bit out of because I've been away and then come home and, and been unwell. But um, you know having having a routine, you know if you get up in the morning and, and you do some yoga and you know you write in your journal and you start your day that way. Um, and you start it early for me is the other thing. Um, and you know a lot of people talk about work life balance. It's it's not it's not a thing. It's just life. And you just make things fit in where they're most important at that point in time. And my children are older. I've got one that turns 19 tomorrow, um, and the other one is 16. So you know, learning to drive and all those things have to just fit into life. And you know, with a, a full-time job and, and a variety of other things on the side, you just make time for what's important right then. And if you're really open with your family around what you're doing and they understand why you're doing it, um, they they accept that a lot more than if you shut them out and, and don't explain to them what you're doing. So that's been important for me. Meg, how about you? I'll, I'd just like to add that, um, you know, a lot of, well, for me, I'm always looking for the perfect time. You know, I, I enjoy cycling and I kind of am to the point where done is better than perfect. So, I mean, I prefer riding when it's like 26 degrees and not 35, but, um, you know, 15 degrees, <laughs> but you know, it's done as better than perfect. So if it's even if it's only a, you know, my driveway is 600 meters long. So even if it's just a draw, like a ride on my bike up to the mile or something like that, at least it's something. Um, so for work life balance, I agree. Communication is cr is crucial in the family setting and with your teenagers and with your family and them understanding 
why on earth do you volunteer so many hours to do all this crazy stuff and travel to Emerald for the weekend and then come to Toowoomba today? Why shouldn't you be, you know, home baking biscuits or something? <laughs> well, it's not who I am. And that's um, that communication about, and I, get, I think it's particularly important for my daughter to see that the reason I'm doing this is, you know, because that's who I am and that's what I want to do. Um, my husband, not quite so convinced, but, um, <laughs> but it is about the communication and making it happen. When I, when I get stressed and anxious, my go-to place is to look at the Bunyan Mountains now and just have a quiet walk down there and back is lovely, but find that thing that, that gives you that release, that release of stress and tension and energy, and it could just be a 10 minute walk, it could just be a 10 minute nap, if when it's all getting too much in your head and your head just can't talk to itself anymore, which happens to me quite frequently. <laughs> Find that thing that releases it. As far as work-life balance goes, the most important thing is what you need to focus on what is most important to you. Uh, um, and then just stay focused on that, whether it's to your, your kids or your husband or your family. Um, just stay focused exactly on that and the reason why you want your balance. Uh, um, and don't let anything, your work or your passion or your job or anything like that, don't let that get in the road of what's most important to you. Thank you for that question. That was a very, very good one because actually as um, uh, also, please make sure you, you uh, subs subscribe to the program um, on the website um, because there also we ask you uh, about that particular question, what is important to you, why you want to become part of the program. And just looking at some of those responses as well, one of it as well that comes through very strongly is trying to find that little bit of balance. Question. I found when you start to network, you get, you know, you get, there's so many ideas out there and you want to join so many things. How do you determine, I guess it goes back to the why, what to say yes to and what to say no to? A couple of years ago, I decided that instead of saying no to lots of things, I'd actually start saying yes mm -hmm. and and have a go at stuff and see where it took me. And then if it was something that I, I enjoyed, then I'd keep doing it. And if it wasn't, then I'd understand that. Um, but by saying no and not experiencing things, it just, you know, you, you then wonder. Um, so I sort of likened it back to when my children were little and, you know, they were learning lots of different things. It was kind of like, all right, you take them to netball, you take them to hockey, you take them to gymnastics, you, you obviously teach them to swim and those sort of things. But you find out what they like and then they can keep doing that. So of course I had one that did netball and one that did, <laughs> you know, hockey. You know, you know, that's just how it worked. But, um, but it was because that's what they enjoyed. And, and then I thought for myself, well, am I doing that to myself? If I keep saying, no, I don't have time for that or no, I don't want to do that. If it's actually something that I'm interested in, say yes and give it a try and then actually find out is it something that you're actually passionate about or not? Is it something you want to invest more time in? And then actually make a decision whether you continue or not. So that's, I've decided to say yes instead. And it's not about um, yes I can do everything and yes it's me, but yes I'm very interested in your idea and finding more about it and how that can work with into what I'm doing. So it might be a bit of FOMO, a bit of fear of missing out, but mm -hmm. it's also ask a busy person, get it, get it done. Um, and it's also around me developing my skills in, well, if it's something for Kieran that someone wants to do that our members could benefit from, it's not just about me. It's a how do I delegate that or pass that on to someone that can actually take that connection and make something happen out of it. So I don't feel personal responsibility to actually implement every idea that comes across my desk. Um, but I do feel that you know, every opportunity is an opportunity and let's explore it and see what it is. At least have the coffee you know, with the person to talk through the idea and um, then you'll actually understand a bit at a different level um, what it is that they're asking you for. But if it's for your personal time and you just don't have it, then I don't think you have to feel any guilt in saying, great idea, let me consider that or send me some more information so you actually have time then. Um, to make a considered decision about is it something that aligns with my goals and my principles and my passion. Um, and if it's not, no guilt in, in passing it to someone who, who it might match better. That passing on aspect I think is very important. I'm, I'm, I'm at that level too where I have to say no um, because if it doesn't totally align with what I'm doing and uh, I'll first find out what it is and you know give feedback where I can but then really try and pass it on to somebody else that can actually work with them. Any other questions? Yeah. How do you know when to get other people involved? I think I've, I've got a lot of skills, a lot of, um, a lot of different um, areas but 
gosh, it takes a lot of time to do everything yourself. Mm -hmm. And it's a big commitment to take the next step, which is asking for someone, but how do you pay them? And like, how do you get to that next? Oh, it's a big step, isn't it? Going from one person to many. So um, have you had to face that sort of situation? What I find is really helpful is if you look at what, how much time you're dedicating to that particular job that you mm -hmm. may or may not be very good at and then work out what, if you took that time and allocated it to doing something else, how much better off would you be? Mm -hmm. right, so don't look at it as a cost, look at it as an asset. Promote though as well is obviously looking at what you are good at and what you're passionate about and yeah, exactly like Lynette was saying, if it's going to help you grow your business um, and, and we focus on a bit of an 80-20 rule, so 80% focused on actually driving your business and 20% on the other stuff that kind of has to happen, um, but if you, like, and I know you've got quite a broad network already, Anna, but if you think about all the people in your network, find out the parts of your business that you don't actually really enjoy doing, and then think of, okay, well, who does that as their own business because they love it, and, and outsource it to them. It's not bringing them into your business necessarily to be your employee. They might run their own business doing that, and they do it because that's what they really love. Make sure they're a good fit for you communication-wise, and then just outsource that bit to someone else. And you know, for a lot of people, bookkeeping is is it. And yeah. I know there's a bookkeeper here, but you know, for a lot of people, there you go. <laughs> but um, but it, it could be any element. It could even be your social media or something like that. You know, people. And I know myself, you know, you get on Facebook to go, I just have to share this event that we've got coming up tomorrow and an hour later you're still looking at stuff and you haven't shared it, you forgot what you even got on there for. Um, so, you know, if that's a time waster for you and it's not a passion for you, there's other people who love it and do it and you can pay them whatever to do it and it's done and, and it's done well because they love it. The other aspect, I suppose, to that, uh, discussion around uh, bringing people on and things like that is, is the co-founder situation as well. So you may not always be looking for an employee, but for someone to share the business or to come along on that journey with you. And uh, what we highly recommend is what we call co-founder dating. So before coming to any degree of uh, agreement or going, yes, we're in this 50-50 uh, or, or things like that and, and getting started, do some, spend some time getting to know the person and, and, and that. But, uh, that's another option, you know, you don't necessarily have to employ people, you can start and grow an empire. <laughs> so we, so just I'll add a little bit to that. So um, Jeff has got a fan of shirt on, which is what made me think of it, but we run a program for um, youth, so 15 to 24 year olds, about teaching them to understand their own skill set, um, but also understand the value of having people on your team <coughs> with different skill sets. Um, and we focus on hipsters, hackers and hustlers. So are you a creative person, are you a technical person, or are you a salesperson? And having those three in your team makes your business grow that much more fast because you each have a role to play. And if you don't have that in your team, then perhaps you need to look for it and, and find those people to work with you. Can I open to say something? We, we have a business very much based on my husband's skills, and like you. Mm. And we got to the point where we had to grow. And it was the same thing. How are we going to find someone just right. who's just right? And we found them from within our own network. And they were people that, you know, Dallas knew through previous employment, through, you know, different things. But they don't live here. And you don't have to have someone who lives here because you have all this technology and this media and wonderful stuff where people can live wherever and work for you or help you. Um, so I'd look within your network because you're going to have people who are similar to you and have similar goals and values. Um, and then look outside because they're the people that you work best with. You know, they understand you, you kind of understand them and that's when I would look. Tell us one tool, your favourite tool that you, that you use for in your business that you can share with, with us. I would have to say I've discovered zero because if it, it just automatically downloads all your bank entries and you don't have any mistakes because I'm dyslexic so that's you know transposing figures and all that sort of stuff is always fun so because it, it automatically downloads all your transactions from the bank it just eliminates all that time that you waste entering checkups. Um, I just had to have a quick think to what's on my screen on my phone. Um, one that I've come across lately is called Zoho Social. So I mean, there's a lot of 
uh, paid social media manager type programs out there, and I've tried Hootsuite, I've tried the buffers, um, but Zoho Social is free, and I actually think it works exceptionally well for managing social media stuff. And I mean, it's not, I haven't played around with the reports, it's not huge in depth stuff, but it gives me all I need for my business. I really love Google's suite of products, so all Google Form slides. Google Keep is one of my favourite things. Um, but the other thing that I've found um, that I've been using for a year or so now is um, Mind Meister, and it feeds then to Meister Task. So it's a mind mapping tool that then imports it into a to-do list um, that you can allocate out and share and delegate, um, and I love it. Yeah. Um, for me, I like to dump everything out of my head into something. So at the moment, I love Evernote. Um, and I also love Wonderlist as a to-do list, but there's millions of to-do list apps out there, but Wonderlist is really mm. useful because it integrates with your email and yeah, it's just a great way to dump stuff out of your head so that you can clear your mind. Okay, W-U-N-D-E-R list. Okay, sorry, my biggest tool is my network. It's not actually a technical tool, but it's a network of support. So if you want to know something or do something or know who can help you do something, put it out there to your network and, um, and that's the best tool I've got. Thank you very much. Let's give um, <laughs> um, Now, the WIRE program, Women in Rural, Regional, Remote Enterprises, um, like I said, is something that's been kind of conceptualised over a number of years already, but we just haven't had the funding to actually take it forward. So, it is about self-empowerment. I really sh I should change that to self-empowerment. I don't really like the word empowerment because you know you, you can pr create the circumstances within which you empower someone else, but it's really about empowering yourself to move forward. This is what we're all about. And um, for us, it is very much around trying to fill some of the gaps out there. The fact that only one in five startups in Australia are women founders. You know, 20% of um, women outside met metropolitan areas. It is about the distance, the la you know, the, the lack of support that we often find out there in rural areas. And that's where this program comes in. And lack of mentors out there as well, who's actually doing, you know, been through it and in the same circumstances and sharing their stories. <coughs> but most of all, it's about the opportunity to, to hook into a capaci capacity building program that's not sitting out there in Brisbane or Sydney or Melbourne, where they take entrepreneurs into the program that's only, and they go through a very tight knit um, channel where only like a few gets through that can actually then accelerate. Whereas our br we're much more broad based and we're not only focusing just on business, we're also focusing on the, the venture and taking that forward. So, I don't even have to go through this list. This is one on the web website as well. But you know, we thought about this and we thought, you know, what is a good fit for this program? If you find yourself sitting anywhere here, or some of you may tick three or four of these boxes, then you're definitely in the right place. So we're quite a unique course consortium, and I think what makes us quite different, um, we have the opportunity to really co-create this program with you. Uh, we have got a lot of expertise. We do, you know, I've got a university and colleagues around that I can draw on and draw upon, and also colleagues on other universities for expertise and knowledge. But this is very much about the savvy side of things to actually get it done. And, you know, we've linked up with, with you know, superb partners in that. So really what I want from this session is to help us to actually provide a program that you would want to be part of, that you feel proud of, that you say, hey, this is my program and I want to tell other people about it. I want to share it as wide as I can for other women to come on board and be part of the program as well. Uh, it's not something we, we want to do to you. It's something we want to do with you and provide a platform for support uh, through the project partners, but also a network of mentors, as well as advisors, as well as experts that will feed into the program as well. 
And then, of course, also the tremendous knowledge of, of, of sharing within the community. If you need something, you know the next person I'm going to go to or Mexican person I'm going to go to. Now, I'm, just gonna, I'm not going to go in depth in all these components because um, we have not fully designed all of the components, but I can tell you a little bit more about them um, so that you know where we're heading. We've got three phases. The first phase is happening currently. Uh, and the Y index survey, so I want to stress, that is live on the website now. You have to go and fill out that survey, please. It's a first, it's a first large scale survey of its type ever uh, that really um, explore how you think, what's important to you, and also tell us what do you want to learn from the program. Okay, so please go to the website uh, and click on events, and then you go and click on um, wire survey and fill it out. It's quite a long service, about 20 minutes. Take, have a cup of coffee, fill it out for us, please. Because um, you know, it's very, very important <coughs> to us to know where you're coming from and what do you want from the program in terms of learning aspects in the program and what you want to learn. And now we're currently doing the regional pro uh, pop-ups uh, in 14 other places after this, Monday, Atherton and Mackay, et cetera, et cetera, going through the entire Queensland. We will be finalising the program probably around about April, so we'll have a lot of data. We'll have all the data through the pop-ups. We'll have all the data then also for the survey to actually pull all of that together and say, okay, well, this is exactly what the program's going to look like. So remember the survey, please. So the second stage is program implementation. Uh, there will be webinar series series that we, uh, you know, a webinar, what is a webinar? Um, probably all, all know what it is, but um, it's, it's just, it's a vehicle for, for, uh, for uh, you know, to, to actually learn from somebody by just listening to a podcast or, you know, going on to and you click on it and listen to an expert on a particular topic area. So you will tell us also in the survey what are the things you want to know about? And then we'll approach the relevant people and bring the best in to actually participate in those webinars and give you that knowledge. So it's short 40, uh, 40 minute uh, webinars or maximum an hour uh, of getting particular people in to talk about particular aspects. Um, and then also you can participate via chat and so forth. We're using the Zoom platform uh, for that. So you don't necessarily have to have you know, internet, you can also link in by phone on that. So the other aspect to it is in May, we'll have an international rural metropolitan women coming together here in Tulma on the 24th of May. Please lock in that date. Um, I'm also running a program in May um, where I have entrepreneurial leaders from Nepal, Bangladesh and Sri Lanka. And I'm actually taking them through the entire country, uh, well starting in Brisbane and then Sunshine Coast, Melbourne, Sydney, um, Toowoomba, Gold Coast, and they do site visits and have a group of mentors, experts feeding into that program. And I thought, while they're here, let's connect you with them. Because potentially, if you already at that stage have developed a bit more around your idea or you already have your business, and you think, actually, I want to have some connections in Nepal, in Sri Lanka, in Bangladesh, here's women. Make those connections on that day. And today we will also ask you to tell us what that day should look like. Because I don't know what it should look like. You should tell me what you want. Um, these women come from six organizations in their countries. They um, f you know, link to organizations where they empower other women. And most of they also entrepreneurs themselves, just like you, but they also linked to with empowerment of women. So th that would be, a, you know, a, I think a wonderful day where we can come together, share our experiences and so forth, but you tell us what you want. Um, then we have um, startup style weekends. Uh, we're going to want to run a couple in June, uh, one here in Toowoomba and one in Ipswich, and potentially we'll see how things go, uh, maybe elsewhere in Queensland as well. We'll just see how our resources are going. And um, traditionally it's like, I think we start on a Friday night, do we? Yes, Friday night, Saturday, Sunday. And if you 
have an idea and you know you haven't launched it yet you that's really where it all happens david can you maybe say in one minute exactly <coughs> what what it is about star weekend style events like that give us an opportunity if you've got a new idea that you want to test uh bring it to the weekend pitch it on the friday night teams form around the popular ideas and you work on that across the course of a weekend now you might be uh you might it might be a brand new business idea that you'd like to test out it might be an innovation within your business that you uh, would like to develop but you haven't tested it or tried it before and this gives you an opportunity to join in with like-minded people uh, we bring in experts uh, coaches mentors uh, and we run some mini workshops just to help you take an idea and and bring it to fruition in the course of a weekend and, and find out whether it's got legs whether it's something that can fly and that essentially and we feed you and and, and that all the way across the weekend so it's um it's a really fun time uh, there's a couple of people probably in this room already that have taken part in a startup weekend kim yeah joy yes like plenty so everybody had fun Yes. yes. <laughs> yeah, all right. So be there or be square. <laughs> We also will be running an online workshop, so that's more kind of a boot camp type online where actually you sit uh, on the other side on your computer or on telephone line and you actually do a, you know, a workshop. We will have a facilitator for the workshop, or maybe a couple of facilitators, where you know, we'll take you through a particular topic area and you will be doing it while you're on the computer. The other aspect of it is the why mentoring uh, hubs where you have various hubs of say eight women in a particular hub um, and then potentially these are just potentialist ideas I'm just brainstorming over, over a period of six weeks or eight weeks uh, take something or take a particular theme that's important to that hub to fruition over six to eight weeks and we also will have, and that's where funding comes in, because we can bring in a whole range of mentors and experts to actually work with hubs. To actually, if you have a problem, you know, or you, you, you know, the, you have some group group mentoring sessions to actually work on specific issues to fulfil your particular objective in six to eight weeks. This is just an idea. I want you guys to tell us what you think should be the di should the, the digital hubs look like and what would work for you. Then we also uh, want to attach a coaching program, individualized coaching program to that. What we're thinking at the moment is potentially for women who actually is really who are really involved in the Y program. So those who's who's participating in various components and being part of a hub to to have an opportunity then to work with a with a coach one on one as well okay and then um, our last uh, activity for the program um, next year will be a scenar scenario planning workshop uh, that's uh, where we will bring agencies together and um, to actually plot out how we can change the ecosystem in Queensland for for women in the entrepreneurial field we currently also, um, you know, we want to take this bigger to Australia, international. This is where we start. We're trialling a lot of stuff. You know, I think you also need to recognise that, you know, I don't know at all. Alison doesn't don't know at all. Um, yes, we do have a lot of experience, but goodness, do I learn from women like yourself every day. That's what I love about my job. Um, so, you know, yeah, it's about co-creating something quite spectacular together that's nowhere else in the world and that if we do want to take it to the UK or Canada or Pakistan wherever we want to take it it's our brand and we take it there and um, I'm hoping that also if you have particular expertise that you can feed into the program bring it share it with 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 us also in the program okay then the last phase um, once again, evaluation. We will be evaluating everything, and that's what makes us a little bit different as well. Um, you will also receive, and that's why it's also it's important to provide us your email if you haven't registered. If you have registered, no problem. You will receive uh, a, a, an email or a, in the in the next week, just to evaluate today, and a few criteria there. So every aspect will be evaluated. By the end of the program, we will also survey all our participants again as to what was the impact of the program. 
Did it make a difference in your life? Where are you? But I think something that I'm very passionate about is building accountability into the program. So if you're a participant, how can we hold you accountable? You know, so how can we, how can you tell us how you're tracking, how you're doing? Because it's important for us to also know whether the program is working. So the last part also will be an evaluation of we will gather a lot of data as we move forward. Okay, so ultimate goal is really to change the ecosystem for rural, uh, regional and remote women. Okay, so that's in short what the Y program is. I'm going to give each table a topic, one particular component of the program. Uh, we have got 40 minutes left. So for instance, some components are not as challenging as other, co other components. For instance, the wire hubs, that's a challenging component. So if, you, if, if I maybe give it to this table, you may spend the rest of the 40 minutes just on that. If I give webinars to you guys, um, mainly you know, what we want, and I'll, I'll give a few criteria there, uh, questions that I want you to look at in evaluating these components. If we give the webinar to you, it's like, okay, well, what would work, you know, what, what are maybe some ingredients? So what I want you to think about these components is the design aspects of it, because we don't know it all, but also the ingredients of it. What, you know, how would you want to pull that together? Um, so, for instance, webinars may only take 10 minutes to put some ideas down. These are the different activities up here. So, give each activity a name. We want to start branding our activities. Okay, so if you, we, we talk about the wire hubs, do you think maybe there's a better name for it? It needs to have the name wire in it though, okay. What is the design, design for the component? So that's the overall design. What should it look like? You know all how to make gourmet meals. The design, it's not necessarily the ingredients yet. What are the desired ingredients? That's the next one. So that's more the nitty gritty of it. What are the different subcomponents that you would like to see included that will motivate you to take part in it and actively promote it and why? Okay, so ingredients are things like length, timing, etc. Um, address content but don't get lost in it. So I don't want you to come up with, okay, well the wire hubs need to look at that and that. There should be webinars on that and that and that. The content areas we're actually feeding a lot in the survey. We've got about how many? 40 questions on content. So we'll do the analysis in the survey on content. Here it's more about designing it and putting the ingredients of the activity for us. But if you feel very strongly about a particular content area, let us know now. What alternative offerings are currently out there that you use and why? We just want to get a bit of a feel for our competitive landscape out there. What are the things that we could potentially include? And what qualities overall are you looking for in the WIRE program? weekends and um, one of the things that uh, was really important first up was was the when and um, how is it going to fit in with with women who have a lot of other commitments that um, isn't necessarily like that for the other 50% of the world <laughs> uh, so we thought um, also the impressions and um, understanding of people of startup weekends or hackathons if they're from outside the startup industry and what we found is that um, there was a, a lack of confidence in attending and a lot of people hadn't um, gone forward and given them a go because they thought they were very competitive or very advers advers adversarial <laughs> and, um, and because there was these prizes at the end. So what we thought of looking at is what do the wired community need and how can we help them develop their business which brought us to the, um, the tagline of wired as in the wired and then the D on the end. That was their idea. <laughs> <laughs> Thank goodness we got included. Have you got, have you got the picture of the typewriter? Tell us a bit. 
<laughs> so, so what we saw is, is women helping, helping other women within the wire environment in the development of their business as they're trying to balance on, on this tightrope and, and, and keep everything juggling. Um, and taking away the competitive aspect, we're looking at what people needed. So there's, there's three areas that women in the WIRE program are going to be. They're going to be those who have established businesses, those who, those who have a very early or, or no idea, um, and those who have a business that need to expand. And because we're looking at um, a number of different uh, physical venues, we were thinking that maybe not one of those could each be themed to, you know, one could be an ideation, one, one could be expanding the business, and one could be um, an established business. Uh, and also to take away the competitive aspect, uh, let people know because they're, they're bounded by geographical areas at some point. Uh, so people can put in a submission, say, hey, I'd like to bring my idea or bring my business and, and this is what I think. Um, so there, there's a bit of a, a pre-planning as well. Um, the other thing is, and I'm not sure if I mentioned this, we talked about not doing it on a weekend. We talked about doing it um, through weekdays and including evenings. So what that means is those women who aren't available during the week can still come in and be involved and work through on the project in the evenings. Um, but um, with weekends, even though normally you would think that that was good, people can come in and even maybe have a residential stay, uh, that that has been a bit of a, a bugbear for those people who have um, young, young families as well. Um, but to find out what our audience actually wanted. Um, so sur sur surveying to confirm the when um, and also the what, uh, making sure that it's marketed appropriately so it, it is warm and it's inviting to the women of WIRE and so that they do feel that they've got the skill sets and they haven't got that imposter syndrome to come in and think, what can I do and how can I help? Um, and so non-adversarial. Um, uh, making sure that throughout the weekend that we have a steady supply of mentors, it's a very supportive env environment and um, lots of small mini training sessions, whether that be in the Lean Canvas, customer validation um, and some assistance in tech mm -hmm. and the like. Um, what have I missed, guys? I think you've got it all. Oh, okay. Oh, 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 and, the and the outcomes. To make sure that, that these, this weekend or, or block of time um, has very clear outcomes so that what the next steps are going to be for these businesses and also the connections that they've made and, um, and following through um, and the outcomes, the practical outcomes that everybody takes from it, not just that particular business as well. Thank you. That's Thanks us. very much. We looked at the Wire Hub um, and so we did spend a fair bit of time on the outcomes because it's uh, really important to, um, you know, why a group of women would come together and, and talk. Um, and so some of the, the key things that were really important to us, first and foremost, was the network, was finding other people that we could connect with. Um, and that criteria around what we connect on uh, was quite varied. And so um, that would throw over into the, the design element. Um, it's about accountability and connecting and sharing ideas. And, um, and also sharing stories and finding motivation and inspiration in what others are doing. Celebrating those success, celebrating those failures and having a place where you can actually take that in a safe place and, and share it. Um, so to um, ensure that we can, we can achieve that, um, the design would need to address things like confidentiality, um, to make it a safe place to share and um, to be timed around when people can can actually meet and, um, and in ways that uh, are going to suit um, different people. So um, it, it was, uh, we certainly did talk a lot about the different um, reasons why people would come together and talk, uh, either across geographically, across Australia or even internationally, or locally even having uh, the ability to find other wire women and, and go and have a, a physical coffee. Um, so it might have been around, well, um, I want to f um, connect with others on different topics and content and get ideas or it might be I just want to find some more people like me mm -hmm. um, and I was in that category. I want to have those discussions mm -hmm. with people um, that are, are content based um, mm -hmm. where we, where we can, share, can share those stories but others are looking for that, um, that inspiration, motivation and, and connection to, to grow their business and, and think of different ways of, um, of achieving that. Um, so the um, name options, oh, 
<laughs> virtual coffee, um, wine, wine, yeah, wine and wind. <laughs> uh, wine and women. Um, and so some of the ingredients um, were around um, having it content based but also skills based, um, looking at the criteria and in signing up to a hub, what are you putting yourself up? What are you looking for? What's the why? What's the, the me bit? And then being able to share that with others so you can find out what sort of hub might um, speak to you and, and what you're looking for. So people can sign up in a, a like-minded manner and, and actually be able to get something out of that. Um, there's, uh, you know, diff that's what's just that one? Like, uh, that's just yeah, we're done. No. Yeah, we probably don't need to cover other hubs. No, that's okay. Yeah. Um, I guess that was the main, yep. the main essence of it. So um, finding the right mechanisms to actually connect is, is still a challenge that we didn't spend a lot of um, mm -hmm. time on. But you know, that it, it might be up, up to the different ways in which um, would suit different groups. In other words, it, it can be so big, uh, it's really hard to clearly define that. But um, there are different reasons why people are wanting to come together, and I think we actually need to address that that diversity and that why. Thank you very much. Cover mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. <laughs>
don't be presenting something that isn't yours. And if it isn't yours, say that it say that it's not. Um, if it's good stuff, we still want to hear it, but we just want you to say that you didn't come up with it. Um, partnerships to move ventures forward, formalisation, connecting, mentoring, motivation, new skills, friendships. Thank you very much. So we thought for outcomes we've got, we'd like to see specific learning. Um, we think ability to propose or to choose a topic. I'm not sure we've got that in outcomes. But we want to. We thought it was important uh, as individuals to be able to sort of say, well, this is what I want the coaching on, um, because everybody's business is going to be different. Um, we thought there should be good uh, new skills learnt and accountability um, for the individual and also for the coach. Um, uh, encouragement to share the journey with someone else, um, to get hints and tips and um, and just some information about what to avoid and the pitfalls and hey, I've done this before and it didn't work, so you know, so we don't go and make the same mistakes. Number two was design, so for the design of the coaching, um, we thought maybe a mentoring speed dating kind of thing so that we can talk to the coaches and see, get a connection with them and see because we're going to connect better with some people than others. So yeah, like a speed dating kind of thing. And maybe a bio page um, on the WIRE website about each individual coach so that we can um, get to know them a bit better. Um, the, we thought it was important for the WIRE participants to have options for engaging on how the engagement took place. So the where, the how, the why, how often, all those sorts of things, whether it's face-to-face, -face, Skype, all those sorts of things. and the length of time and frequency, so maybe like for some people half hour every two weeks is going to be better than um, an hour a month apart kind of thing. Um, and we thought, we actually thought that probably short regular catch ups were going to be better than longer further spread apart ones and that would also help with um, uh, accountability and that sort of stuff and it would depend on locality too because we all sort of come from different areas so we that it should be an individual agreement between the individual and the coach. Um, uh, individual in ingredients, sorry. So we thought um, the ingredients of it would be, uh, there should be a variety of skills and life experiences within the coaches, um, whoever take on the roles as coaches. Have you chosen the coaches yet? No, it's still in the making. Yep, okay, so we thought that, that would be good. Um, choice of coach I'm not sure why we've written that down we think there should be a feedback system on the coaches too so um, uh, you know those how did they perform kind of oh, yeah. performance that's review kind of, kind of yeah that's what I'm trying yeah. to say yeah. um, we've got bio page written on there as well and um, we want different people with different skills in mentoring like so for the coaches to actually have a skill set that goes with coaching and mentoring not just somebody who's good at what they do in their work, but also to have some experience and skill sets around coaching and mentoring. Um, where are we up to? Alternate offerings. We didn't. We, we're not really sure of what's around. Um, we were just sort of saying that there's probably private companies around. That one suggestion was something called Small Fish. I've not heard of them. Mm. I don't know. And uh, there's a Nice program um, that gets run where they run a. They do a certificate in certificate four in business, and then they offer a mentoring. Coaching thing. There's a couple of online There's a few, yeah, a few different things around. Um, names, well, we weren't, yeah, but okay. we'll leave it at that. <laughs> so the overall qualities of the WIRE program that we were talking about that must be accessible to people with and without internet at different stages of their, you know, what they're working on and the different industries and so that that means that that it, that it applies across all industries and oh and it applies to different stages of the business they're so enthusiastic um and then this concept of having a, a database of skills that that are within the network having it available to um, everyone who's part of this group and which which kind of links <coughs> into the social networking and also um the, the concept of that database also having kind of petitioned as in a, like a social entrepreneurship, like a pro bono, pro bono in kind 
um, skills that are available and, and on offer. Yeah, and then just the, the quick masterminding was the, um, the Hub. hubs. So that's what we call the Wire Mastermind Hub. And to have a clear structure of what will be done as part of that hub. Um, so that's eight people to 10 is a good number to work with. Having face-to-face um, -face at start and finish and having social contracts set at the start. Um, different timing for different hubs, so some may be intense and short-term or regular long-term. Um, having that accountability that everyone's talked about. <coughs> and um, so, yeah, for, which you know, includes for business, personal growth and getting some stuff done. Um, you know, opportunity to have some smaller groups and to become more you know, intimate in, in um, what develops within that group and having, having those expectations about participation. Um, and then this just ongoing options and, and that links into some you know, flexibility, um, the opportunities for feedback. Um, and one thing that was important that we talked about was ways to continue this after the program. Um, to, to you know, and some of those things that we talked about, you know, the database and that being able to continue that. Um, but within the hubs, having some clear outcomes, you know, e.g., e coming out with a business plan, personal growth, and then the most important one in the middle that everyone loved to talk about was these destination hubs, which may involve a retreat option, <laughs> two, <laughs> two weeks in Bali, and includes <laughs> massage. <laughs> massage is in between, you know, so that the brain can kind of relax with the massage. Um, please tell other women about this, get them involved because that way we make more connections to help our businesses grow. Thank you very much for coming along and um, we'll see you very soon, um, either digitally, on email or in some form in the future. Thank you.